He's Darren Ryder. I'm Andy Baskin. Always game day in Cleveland. Brought to you by our good friends at Smiley One and Bryant, uh, Northeast Ohio's premier heating and cooling experts. All right, Daryl, how should the fans feel after this victory? Again, like we had this mix of callers today on on the air that I was trying to get a feel for what the deal is, and I, I you know, so a lot. I, I thought it'd be a lot bigger on Kevin Stefanski. Like when I listened to the morning show, people that were on their afternoon or on their morning drive into work were killing Kevin. Not so much on the midday show. We'll see how it plays out in the afternoon show. But the the mistakes, I, I just don't know. I, I don't think Kevin's calling a horrible game if it's executed well. I think he's got the right personnel in there. I mean, the first game um, when Deshaun went out and DTR was in, I did question a lot of that. Why are we calling this play when you've got a kid that really doesn't have the experience? But for the most part, I think Kevin is a pretty good play caller. It's the execution and the reason why we call it execution. Because if it doesn't work, everyone wants to execute the coach. If I'm being really honest, I really don't want to talk about Browns fans. Okay. I, I'm just being, I just, I don't. Well, I mean, there's <laughs> I a general some, feeling here. That there's say, a feeling. I, I might say some things that might upset them. So, um, you know, uh, I, I think Kevin did an excellent job yesterday. I, I think he's a really good play caller. Um, I, is he perfect? No. But he he's he's not the dumbass that these fans think he is. And I'm sick of hearing it. So as to not get myself in, in trouble with the dog pound, uh I'm I, I'm going to keep my thoughts on Browns fan to myself. So, Daryl, tell me what makes Kevin Stefanski a good coach. Lay that out because I don't know that that's getting out there. Well, I, I think he's I think he's pretty good when it comes to the the, the tactical stuff. Like, um, I, I I you know do do I think he did a great job against San Francisco? No, but I blame more Deshaun for that than him. Because the the impression, or I, I'm sorry, not San Francisco, um, uh, Baltimore. Right. Uh, I'm on so much medication now. I don't know if I'm coming or going. Um, between, Do you want to explain to people why you're on medication? If you're going to say that, you might as well tell. So them. I, uh, so I had to sacrifice my pain meds for my oral surgery. Okay. To take uh, cold and flu medicine. Gotcha. And my pain meds are uh, uh, you can't mix and match. Like I, I can't take cold and flu medicine and my pain meds. So I'm in throbbing pain in my mouth every time I talk. And um, and I uh, am uh, uh, playing hurt, if you will. But you're playing through it. Playing through it. Playing through it. Um, and this is my flu game. And so, uh, yeah. But no. You had a flu post, too, so. <laughs> oh, God, that was brutal yesterday. You were hurting on the post. game. That was probably the quickest podcast I, we've ever done. I, I don't know how I survived that because – this is not a joke. As soon as we were done with that podcast, I went straight to bed. I didn't wake up until after the Sunday night game was over. I, I, I missed the entire Sunday night game. And then uh, I was awake long enough to take a shower, you know, brush my teeth, whatever. Went right back to bed. Woke up this morning in time to do uh, uh, Ken and Anthony's uh, morning show. Um, and then as soon as I was done with them, like I took a hot steam shower before doing that to, to clear myself out. And then uh, I, I did their show. And as soon as I was done with their show, I went right back to bed. <laughs> had the alarm set for 12.15 so I could wake up for Kevin. Woke up, did Kevin. Uh, wanted to take a nap after that, uh, but things to do. Uh, so when we're done with this, I'll finish doing the things I need to do. Uh, and then I'm going right back to bed. And so Chicken noodle to soup, bro. Chicken noodle soup. Well, I can't have any hot food because I, uh, uh, I have stitches in my mouth. And I don't like cold chicken noodle soup. That's the problem. <laughs> so um, the noodles aren't then the, you can't have the noodles and, and the noodles. Uh, so uh, I made the mistake of eating noodles and it uh, did not go well for me. So yeah, I, then I, I would not suggest matzo ball soup. Yes. Yeah, so I am on the uh, I, I am mixing it up. I did have pancakes yesterday, but um, I am on the jello yogurt cottage cheese uh pudding diet that is what i have been eating for like the last six days i go to the dentist on tuesday and hope Daryl, you don't have a lot of weight to lose i don't know you're gonna be how much have you lost i i, I can't andy my my pants i have to like fold the loop when i put the belt on because i've yeah do you they need don't... to put another loop another hole in the, they, they the don't belt? stay up 
I, I put my pants on the other day, right? And sometimes I can go beltless. Right. Now, I couldn't go beltless. They fell down immediately. And and let's put this way: when I look down, I can see the top of my toes again. So Daryl has lost a little, and I don't have a lot to lose, as you said. So no. I'm hoping that when I go Tuesday, the dentist says I can go back to eating normal people food again because uh, I'm starving. <laughs> Like well, it's funny, my, my girlfriend joked because I showed her a picture of my cart and it like was full of I felt like Billy Madison. I was loading up on the snack packs. Right? Yeah, they were on sale. So I'm loading up on snack packs. She goes, that's an excessive amount of snack packs. I go, yeah, that's not lasting three days. And sure as can be did not last three days. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I am not surprised. I'm trying to figure out how to get us back on track after that. One. Uh, well, OK, so we were talking about, uh, you know, Kevin, the tactician and stuff like that. I, I just yeah. I feel like he's a really good coach. Now, do I feel like he's a motivational coach? Is he a guy that like when I hear him speak, I'm ready to run through a brick wall for? No, I, I don't. But I'm going to give him credit. He went out and brought a guy in to his coaching staff. He actually brought two guys in to his coaching staff this offseason to do that in Jim Schwartz and Bubba Ventrone. So I don't think he needs to be the rah-rah, get everybody ready to run through brick wall, right? Like, um, I, I think that every coach screws up clock management. I'm sorry. Like, I watched well, the Giants game. about two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. man. I, Are you kidding? I, I watch a ton of football at all levels, high school, college, and I felt like it is a weekly thing where these coaches are screwing up clock management. So when fans call into the station and are bitching to moan them because Kevin Stefanski screwed up clock management, I'm like, well, him and 31 other dudes in the National Football League. Like, Andy Reid screws up clock management, and he's won a couple of Super Bowls. Like, right. you, you know what I'm saying? There is no there is no perfect coach, but here's what I think, okay? Mm -hmm. I think Browns fans are so conditioned to losing. They're so conditioned to the constant turmoil, change, the drama, all that kind of stuff that they, you know, they they enjoy the wins, but I don't think they understand how to enjoy the wins at this point, right? Because there just hasn't been a lot. Of that was a weird game to enjoy the win, though, wasn't it? Well, I, like, yeah, there were, what, you're I, saying eight lead changes isn't enough of a role? No, no, it's the, you know what's keep sticking is the uh, the pass interference call. Like, there was no way that ball was catchable. But, Run. but here's the thing, Andy. How many times have the Browns been screwed over? By oh, I, I'm not arguing that at all. And, uh, you know, but no. it still doesn't just something – Seems weird. Your offense didn't look very good. And... Well, and and you know what? Again, that's fine that the offense, you know, doesn't look. P.J. Walker is the quarterback. Like, he got called up. Of course, it's not going to look good, right? But here's the thing. They made just enough plays. And to the unlucky, right, just, just because that pass interference flag got thrown, right? The, mm -hmm. the second one. The first one I thought was legit. And and thank God that that was legit because that was a strip sack fumble recovery. Colts win the game. Right. I, that absolutely was a legit uh, uh, defensive holding, hand, whatever it is that they call right. it. That was a legit flag. Um, But just because that DPI was called on an uncatchable ball did not give the Browns the win. The Colts still had an opportunity to stop the Cleveland Browns from getting in the end zone. You see True. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and and so let's give the Browns credit. Let's give Kevin Stefanski credit for listening to his, his guys. Like half the offensive line, I guess, was yelling and screaming, run the damn ball. You know, we got it. Run the ball. And and Kevin waited to fourth down to go ahead and do that. And Kareem Hunt was able to get across. He put Nick Harris. Although I still, I, like I question whether they could have done it with 25 seconds. Well, All it takes you know, is one. You, a, a bad run that took too long and a guy laying on another guy. And the next thing you know, you're out of, out of place. But you know what? It, it, it worked out. You don't want, you didn't want to give the Colts any time on the clock to be able to get themselves in field goal range true. Uh, to true, either true, force true. overtime or, or, or to beat you. So that like worked out beautifully, but like um, putting Nick Harrison as a fullback in front of Kareem Hunt. Great call. Yeah. Uh, he's been doing that. I mean, I, I love that call. Recognizing that Harrison Bryant. And by the way, that saves a roster spot when you do that because you don't put a fullback on your team. Right. You know, Harrison Bryant, having him be uh, a, a short yardage guy and throwing that pitch thing into the thing. You know, uh, people bitching about the P.J. Walker pitch back to Jerome Ford that Ford wasn't able to. to but Ford didn't hang on to it. I mean, that like, I can't be mad about the call there. Right. But, but that's even the interception, hang on, Daryl, not to intercept, but even the interception 
that ended up with them getting the ball in the two yard line truly was as good as a punt. I'm sorry. Right. I mean, 100%. People, like I'm looking around and people are getting all mad about the, Oh, this is stupid. Why? Oh, I can't There's believe you threw a pick. Two. Yeah. I mean, the ball was that it, it is equivalent of Cordy. Okay. So the pass was, it was I, I, they as, put it inside the three. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what more you could ask for. Yeah. So that's why I just, I think fans are so conditioned here to firing the coach. Right. I think that's a big, big problem. Like that. Th- you can't develop any continuity, any system. This is the second year with Deshaun Watson. Like it's, I can't stress this to Browns fans enough. It is critically important that Kevin Stefanski and Deshaun Watson work. They have invested so much draft capital to get this guy here. They invested so much cash. And again, it's not my cash. It's Jimmy. I don't, I'm all for, you know, setting Jimmy Haslam's money on fire. I don't care. Okay. He can afford it. But like, um, they've invested so much. You as fans should absolutely want this to work. A hundred. Explain why in a second, Daryl. Explain why in a second. It's always game day in Cleveland. He's Daryl Ryder. I'm Andy Baskin. He's going to explain to you in a second. 